All right, in the last video, we just completed creating this table of latest orders and populating it with some mock data. So let's go ahead and make a commit. And now in this video, what I'd like to do is to go ahead and create the template for our system health page. So what I'm kind of thinking for this page is that we'll have a set of cards here to show the online or offline state of various servers that we might have running at this uh, fictional organization. So we'll have a dev mail server, a dev web server, and then maybe a dev shop server. And then we'll repeat those for maybe like a QA in a prod environment. Basically just to kind of give us a visualization about the status of um, a number of different types of servers, just as an example. You might also use this as a visualization for different types of services that you might have running on an individual server. Just the general idea um, that we can get some visibility and control into the state of some object that's represented in our database. So let's go ahead and start building our template. Let me go ahead and close some of the open tabs that we had and minimize some of the sections here. So we're gonna open up section health and we'll go into the section health template and I'll remove the boilerplate code here. And I'm gonna create a div with class section container. Again, this, this div could really go on the outside of our router outlet. Again, this div could really go on the outside of our router outlet. So we'll have to go back and refactor that out of our templates here at a later time probably. And we'll call this uh, section system health. And I'm gonna represent this visualization also as a set of cards. So we'll have a class card deck and then a custom CSS class servers. And so what I think we'll do is similar to the way that we had a collection of orders on our order page, we're gonna have a collection of servers on our system health page. So we're gonna use another ng4 directive here. And here we'll say let server of servers. So we'll need a servers property in our component. And then what I'd like to do here uh, to make this component a little bit different is to actually create a collection of server components. So we'll have an app server um, that we'll create many times here. And this will also be the point at which we start beginning to take a closer look at inputs on our components uh, from parent components. So this app server component will sort of be a child component to our section health and our section health component will provide some input into each of the individual app server components that it generates. So before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we need to go ahead and create this component. So I'll head back to the console here and we'll ngc to generate a new component and we'll call it server. So the CLI went ahead and created those files for us and we can see it now here in our app directory. So we'll take a look at that component here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and finish out this component by creating this servers property on our section health component. So we'll head here and again, empty constructor for the time being. We're gonna create our servers property, which will be an array of type server. So we'll need to go ahead and create this type so we can head into our shared directory and I'm gonna create a new file called server.ts. And it'll be very simple. We'll export an interface server. And a server will have an ID, which will be a number, a name as a string, and we'll just have a Boolean value to show whether or not it's online. Could of course get more complex here and have some type of server status, which could either be a string or another complex type, but we'll keep it relatively simple and use this Boolean type here to just to show whether or not the server is online. So if we head back into section health component, we can go ahead and import this server type now. And just as we've done previously, we'll go ahead and create our placeholder data for the time being as well. So we'll call it sample servers. And then above our component here, say sample servers as a constant. So 
So each server has an ID, a name, and a value for is online. And so we'll just go ahead and create four different servers here. So we'll say we have like a dev web, a dev mail server, and then maybe just separate servers here for prod or something. And we'll say that the dev mail server, for instance, is offline. Okay, so we've got four servers in our sample set here. We set the servers property here to the value, which is this sample servers array. And in our health component here, we are generating four instances of an app server here based on the four servers that are in this servers property. So what we should see on the page is the default placeholder message from app server four times. So let's go ahead and take a look. And indeed that is what we see, server works four times. So let's go ahead and wire up our server objects um, first just so that we can get them looking nice. So we'll head down here, we'll head over into our server component and then into the template. We'll remove this and I'm going to create each server as a card. So let's say div class card mb3 shadow and block status. Um, block status being a custom class that we'll have to implement and, and shadow being the uh, global CSS class that we have for elements with box shadows. And so now we'll have a div with class card header where we'll supply a server name and a div of class card body where we'll specify the server status. And then we'll also have a button here that we'll use to actually toggle the status on each of these servers. Now, again, these are just sort of placeholder values. In just a moment here, we'll actually supply the actual server name, server status, and we'll be able to change what's displayed on the button here um, to either activate or deactivate depending on the status. And we'll also look at how to change the color of the block depending on the status. Um, but just to kind of take it one step at a time here, we'll just go ahead and create this uh, sort of placeholder server component template. Let's go take a look at the page. Okay, so we do have four server cards here. Um, they're not looking too great, just looking kind of uh, plain. So let's go ahead and apply some basic CSS. So we'll head over into our server component CSS. We're gonna have our block status class, and we'll make each of these cards 200 pixels square. Set a font size of 1.3 em, color of black. Uh, we'll align the text center. Apply some padding on the left and right of 20 pixels. Set a margin all around of 20 pixels. Okay, so let's take a look now. All right, so starting to look a little bit better. I'm gonna apply a few more classes here just to clean things up. So over in our server component template, the card header, I'm also gonna give a class name. Card body, I'm gonna give a class of status. And then the button, first of all, we can give it some bootstrap styling here with button and maybe button default. And I'm gonna give a custom class action here as well. All right, so then we'll just finish that up in the CSS where we have our uh, status class, display block. And I'm gonna supply a transition here, which we'll see in a little while. Um, I'll go ahead and fill it out now when we actually transition the state of our server from on to off or back, um, we're gonna just apply a bit of a transition here and kind of make that transition look smoother. And we'll create our name class, which will have five pixels of padding and a little bit smaller font. Display block, um, we'll create this as a monospace font family. And again, apply a little bit of transition here. And then finally we have our action class, which we'll apply to our button. We'll 
We'll have a little bit of margin at the top, 12 pixels, and again, a transition here. Okay, so if we take a look at the page now, again, looking pretty plain, um, but this will start to look better as we develop the feature. We've got some buttons that we can click on, and we have a uh, server name and server status. So now how are we actually going to represent the different servers that we have here um, within that ng4 loop that the section health is generating? Well, for that, we need to provide some input to our server component so that it can then set the properties on itself uh, using those inputs. So let's take a look at how to do that. If we head back into our section health component.html where we have our ng4 loop and we're generating our server components. Now, recall that these are getting generated from this collection of servers. And so we have the properties on each server of servers. So we can supply them as inputs to our server component. And we'll do that using square brackets and then the name of the input that we would like to set. So what I'm gonna do is actually pass this entire server object to each of our server components. And so the input, the property name of the input will go in square brackets here on our server component. And then we're going to set it to server, which is referring to this server of servers that's coming from our section health component. So what we need to do is to define a server property as an input on our server component now so that this parent component, our section health component, can pass each instance of its server object to the server component. So we'll head over into our server component TypeScript file and we just need to import a few things here. First of all, we're gonna be passing a server object to this component, so we need to go ahead and import that model which in this case is just one directory up in our shared directory and in the server file. The next thing that we need to import is directly from Angular and it's the input decorator. And the initial version of this component is actually gonna be quite simple, although this will become perhaps the most complex component that we have in the application ultimately. Um, but for now, the way this is gonna work is we're just gonna use this input decorator with at input and we're gonna use it on a property called server. So now this server input refers to the input server that's on our server component instance here in our section health component. So our section health component is gonna say, okay, I have this collection of servers. For each one of them, generate a server component. Look for this input server on the server component and pass it uh, you know, the particular instance of server from this for loop. If you're getting confused by the names here, um, then we could call this property server input, and then on our server component, I'll go ahead and name this server input, just to make it uh, a little bit more clear. So again, server input on our server component, getting set to the server that's coming back from the loop in its parent component here. So now what I can do is actually just use interpolation in our server component template to display the particular server name or status that's been passed. So we received it as an input and now we can access the properties on it. So the input server input is a type of server. And in our template, we can replace our placeholder text with server input dot name for the name and server input dot is online to display whether or not it's online, which in this case for now will just be true false, but we'll look at how we can change that to uh, be represented as an actual status value. So if we take a look at our page now, we can see that we have the server name and then true or false depending on whether or not that particular server was online as we had defined it. So if we take a look back in our parent component, which was our section health component. So for that, we need to actually open the section health TypeScript file. We had define our array of server objects as such. And so now when we iterate through this array of servers and pass it to the server component, um, we're seeing our results here. Likewise, if I were to change, say, dev web um, online to false, we could see that get updated here on the page as well. So just move that back to true. 
So now we can see that that's how that gets wired up. In the next video, we'll look at how to wire up event bindings to our buttons that are on our server components, as well as how to change the style for the component itself, depending on the value of the isOnline property. So that's going to allow us to create green cards for servers that are online and red cards for servers that are offline.